In 1906, uh, they made a symbolic pilgrimage from this campus to the site of John Brown's Fort, which at the time was about a mile away on a farm known as the Murphy Farm. And it was the most, one of the most dramatic and impressive moments in the history of the Niagara Movement, that silent pilgrimage. Uh, the men and women removed their shoes and socks as if they were walking on hallowed ground. Spectacular. This many people coming to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the meeting of a group of men whose aim was simply one thing, equal rights. It's, it's termed civil rights, but that, that was the aim. And now, 100 years later, from that first meeting in this country, there are all these people have come to, to celebrate this. Young people can benefit from uh, the kind of dramatizing that has gone on and is going on here at Harpers Ferry uh, of these issues in ways that are gripping and not boring. Uh, and from those dramatizations, uh, uh, you would hope that uh, they would say, well, yeah, we've, we've come a long way, but it isn't perfect. And, uh, and to the extent that it is ideal, it'll only be so if we are attentive, uh, if, if we are vigilant. I, I'm hoping, you know, our goal obviously is that people uh, come to this event and they go home with either a new or renewed sense of appreciation of the importance of Niagara in American history and how what happened 100 years ago has affected our lives in a positive way today. And that's really what it's all about. When I was, when I was a student here, 49, 50, nothing like this would have been possible. And this is spectacular. The most, one of the more interesting things about it is the crowd is probably you know, I didn't, I didn't make any real count, but the crowd is probably equally black and white. That's, that's pretty remarkable, honestly, not. considering what, what it is that's, that's being celebrated. Yes, and I am thrilled that I was here to see it. Uh, I just learned uh, earlier, as you have, that the Ku Klux Klan is, is here. Uh, on motorcycle uh, patrolling uh, the perimeter uh, and that they may come to uh, when the Q&A <laughs> to ask questions or to disrupt it. Um, uh, in a way that's really quite surprising. The Klan, I thought the Klan, they had all retired. Uh, uh, apparently not. But uh, if that is true today, then yes, imagine in 1906 uh, this meeting of these very progressive African-American men and women who certainly um, negated all the stereotypes. And when you negate stereotypes, instead of people saying, oh, that's, these people are terrific, it often results in people saying, this is threatening, we, we don't like this, they're uppity, they are, they're not keeping their place. So yes, in terms of mores, uh, they were not doing things that were commonplace in, in these parts in 1906. But their demands were American demands for equality only. You see, hindsight is a rather spectacular phenomenon. Of all the organizations established, developed, 
that came about during the fiercest days of the civil rights movement. The Niagara movement it spawned the NACP. The NACP, in my mind, this is just my opinion, probably did more to get rid of segregation, Jim Crow, but did it using the laws of the land in the court. That group of men started, had their first meeting here, all significant, because this was the revolutionary ground or the insurrection ground of John Brown. He's, he, and John Brown was about freeing the slaves. The NAACP was about freeing the slaves, all the bondages and, 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 and uh, segregation and discrimination and all this stuff resulting from slavery. Rather amazing. 